This is how I would learn structural engineering if I could start over. For context, I've been in the engineering world for a little over five years now and currently work at a mid-sized structural engineering firm that designs high rises all the way down to residential houses. Before that, I was at a large global company for a year and while I was at uni, I did two internships of which one was at a small company and the other at a large. Also, while I was at uni, I spent a crap load of hours studying trying to get the best grades possible and ended up graduating with class one honors and the university medal for academic achievement. But I definitely made it to where I am the hard way. So in this video, I'm going to be introducing you to something I like to call the structural engineering roadmap, which is basically all the important things that I think you should focus on while you're at uni. If you want to spend your time learning things that are actually going to be useful. All right. So in this map, there are four major headings, theoretical, practical experience, and study techniques. Each one of these headings represent a key component that will make you a well-rounded and solid graduate engineer. And one by one, I'm going to be breaking down what things I would focus on in each. Okay. So starting with the theoretical column, the first thing that I would learn is engineering mechanics mechanics. Here I would focus on mastering things like solving free body diagrams, drawing bending moment and shear force diagrams, and also how to find and calculate material properties like the center of gravity and the second moment of area. Also another thing that's important to learn here is the analysis of trusses, of which there are two ways which are the method of joints and the method of sections. Okay and next on the list is mechanics and materials, and similar to engineering mechanics, this is all about mastering the fundamentals. Here I would spend my time learning about material properties like the modulus of elasticity and how to calculate the section modulus. I would also spend my time understanding beam deflection and what factors affect how much a beam deflects. And finally, I would learn about how the flexure formula works. Now, apart from the basics that I've already mentioned, I would not spend any more time than you have to in order to pass your exams, spending time learning how to solve things using first principles. At uni, we spend so much time learning how to solve things using first principles, but none of this is actually useful after you graduate because all of these things have now been programmed into software. For example, once you're a working engineer, you're never gonna find the deflection of a beam by determining its elastic curve because this involves doing a long winter calculation that has calculus and algebra in it. Instead you put the beam and its loads into a structural analysis program and then get the result this way with a lot less effort and a lot less margin for error. Anyways after now completing these two fundamental courses it's finally time to start applying all that you've learnt and the two main ways that you'll do that at uni is by learning steel design and concrete design. Steel design is usually the first design course that you take at uni so in this course you finally get exposed to the concept of load takedowns which is a huge part of the job as a structural engineer. A load takedown is basically the process of estimating the magnitude of all the different loads that act on an individual member. So this means that you learn how to calculate wind loads, dead loads, live loads, earthquake loads, and maybe even snow loads. And then from here, you learn how to calculate a member's tributary area so that you can apply the correct amount of loading. After this, you can get into the good stuff, which is learning how to design common steel members like rafters, beams, columns, struts, and bracing. Also here, you should learn how to design cold form steel like purlins and girts. Now designing steel members is something that you're gonna do on a weekly basis when you're a graduate structural engineer. So make sure once you've got this skill that you maintain it throughout your studies. All right, and the second main design course that's really worth your time is concrete design. Here you'll learn how to design and analyze reinforced concrete beams, slabs, walls, and columns. And depending on your uni, you'll also learn about pre-stressed concrete. In my opinion, concrete design is probably one of the most intricate and technically challenging courses that you take while you're a student, but the concepts are really important to understand. So if you are able to grasp them while you're a student, you will be really well prepared to start working as a design engineer. All right, so the last thing I've added to the theoretical column is geotechnical engineering slash soil mechanics. As a structural engineer, you do need to have a reasonable understanding about foundation properties. So the types of things that I would pay attention to here are allowable bearing pressure calculations, soil types and properties, and also lateral earth and hydrostatic pressure calculations for retaining wall design. Okay, so now that we've covered all the important theoretical concepts, let's move over to the practical column. And first up, we have structural drawings. Structural drawings are the final product of all the calculations and analysis we do as engineers. And these drawings are the only thing that builders actually care about, because they are the detailed picture of exactly what they need to construct. But funnily enough at uni, no one teaches you how to read or even make these drawings. And although learning how to make these drawings is something that you can master over time when you start working, learning how to read these drawings is something that you can master now. I've actually already created a full video on my channel about how to read structural drawings. And if you're learning from scratch like I was, watching that video is a good place to start. But eventually you're going to need to get your hands on a set of drawings and then just do some practice. So I would suggest getting on Google and doing a search for a set of structural drawings and then just getting familiar with how things get displayed and referenced. Okay, and next on the list is construction terminology. And what I mean here is learning the names of as many different things that are used in construction as possible. For example, a few of the building components that you'll need to be familiar with if you're working in 
steel construction are rafters, struts, bracing, outriggers, purlins, flats, plates, fin plates, cap plates, teeth plates, stiffeners, fillet welds, butt welds, and bolt sizes. Okay, that was a bit of a joke, but I think you get my point. There's a lot of different things that you need to learn the name of in construction, and by simply turning up to class, you're not going to learn those things. So what I would suggest doing is getting on Google and searching up annotated diagrams of timber, concrete, and steel construction, and trying to commit as many of those names to your memory as possible. One of the most overwhelming things as a graduate engineer is when people are constantly talking about things that you have no idea about. So this is one of those processes that will definitely pay off big time. All right, and next on the list is software programs. Obviously these days analysis and design programs are a huge part of every engineer's workflow. So learning how to use these programs is not only gonna make you a lot more employable, but it's gonna make you a better engineer. Now, if I was gonna be learning how to use these programs from scratch, the four programs that I would learn how to use because they're the most relevant to me today are Space Gas, Strand 7, RAM Concept, and Wrapped. These particular programs may not be popular depending on where you live because it tends to change depending on your region, but as long as you're getting familiar with some sort of steel design and concrete design program, you should be fine because a lot of the skills are transferable to other programs. Okay, and now it's time to move on to the next heading which is experience. And first up is internships. Knowing what I do now, the advice I'd give to my younger self regarding internships is one, don't wait, start applying for internships in your first year of uni, and two, only target small companies. The reason I'd give myself this advice is because I think that being able to consolidate the things that you're learning by working on real projects while you're at uni is gonna be able to allow you to see the bigger picture and is also gonna make you so much more proficient at your job when you start working as a graduate engineer because you already have a few years experience under your belt. And also the reason I tell myself to target smaller companies is because in these atmospheres, you're able to get a lot more hands on and the mentorship and the teaching you get here will far outweigh anything you get at the larger companies. All right, and the other thing I have in this section is personal projects. And what I mean here is simply trying to design different types of structures by going through the whole calculation process and then trying to produce a structural drawing. In some of your university classes, you'll have projects where you need to design simple things like a signpost or a portal frame, but you'll rarely have to go the extra step and produce a structural drawing. But if you really want to improve as an engineer, these are the sorts of projects and tasks that are really going to make the difference. For example, if you've already taken the steel design course, in your own time, you could sketch up a little warehouse and give it some dimensions and pretend that it's going to be built in your local industrial area. From here, you could carry out all the calculations and sketches that would be needed to actually construct such a building. This process might take you a couple of weeks while you're trying to balance uni and other commitments, but by the end of it, you would have learned heaps and actually made yourself a really good project to showcase on your resume. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to the final column, which is study techniques. And in this column, there are four things that I have done and definitely would do again to learn things efficiently. I already have quite a few videos on my channel talking about the different study techniques I used throughout my time at uni. So I'm gonna keep this section of the video quite brief and simply just list the four things. So we've got summary sheets, clear tutorial question solutions, active recall, and space repetition. And if you do want to find out more about any of these study techniques, the best place where you can find these videos on my channel is to go to playlists and then have a look at either the productivity playlist or the study tips playlist. Anyways, that was the full roadmap that I would use to learn structural engineering if I were to start over. And if this video brought you value, you might be interested in watching this video here where I talk about the lessons I learned in my first year of work or that video there where I talk about how to make studying engineering fun. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.